Here in the Champagne region of France, we're going to Nicolas Foyet to find out how to make world-class champagne. Nicolas Foyet operates a cooperative called the Centre Vinicole, made up of 5,000 growers. It cultivates over 2,000 hectares of vines spread across the whole of the Champagne region. The man entrusted with their grapes is cellar master Jean-Pierre Vincent. The work is uh, to be here with, uh, with the beginning of the wine, the grapes, and uh, after I, I hope to, to, to go to, uh, all around the world to test uh, the, the wine. I think it's very interesting. I like this job. Centre Vinicole Champagne Nicolas Fayette is a union of cooperatives and uh, we, we have uh, 85 different cooperatives. The big advantage to, to, for that is to, to be present in uh, 300 different villages. We have in Champagne 340 different villages and we are present in 300. Two things important. These are the people of the territory who believe in their territory. Another thing important, juridically, this cooperative is not vendable donc n'est pas opéable. Donc nous avons une légitimité par rapport à ce terroir et nous ne pouvons pas être rachetés par une autre société. Jean-Pierre has been working at Nicolas Foyet since the brand's inception over 30 years ago and in that time has managed to produce around 500 million bottles of champagne. To, to do a, a very good champagne is to have a production of uh, every different villages and uh, to have the three varieties, to have Pinot Noir, to have Chardonnay, to have Pinot Meunier, and to blend is very easy. It? At the beginning, I uh, only, only 400 different uh, steel wine, and it's necessary to blend uh, the 400 uh, steel wine. It's very easy, in fact. And what does Jean-Pierre think of this year's harvest? I say the degree is good, the acidity is good, the maturity is good, the grapes are beautiful, uh, all is good. After the grapes have been picked, it's off to the on-site press, where they are crushed and await transportation to the vat house. Pressing the grapes locally reduces the distance each grape has to travel in the production process. It's very important to deliver grapes very quickly because when you cut the grapes, the colour moves to the juice. And we just need white juice because we make only white wine. Here at the vat house, surrounded by these enormous tanks, the wine is separated according to origin and grape variety. This is the first stage of fermentation, after which yeast is added and they are left for 8 to 10 days. The tanks we are 10 meters uh, high, it's a very big, here we have uh, a big tanks, big tanks of uh, 1,800 uh, hectoliters is a big one. We try to have the same village in the same tank and uh, we have also the three varieties, Pinot Noir, Pinot Meunier, Chardonnay, in different tanks. The bubble in Champagne is not here. Here we have a production like a normal wine, it's a steel wine uh, and after when we bottle the the, the, the wine, we put sugar, we put yeast to have the, to have the bubbles. No, here is the same like in Burgundy, like in uh, every, everywhere. Being a young company, Nicolas Foyat is embracing the potential of new technologies. With temperature controlled environments, Jean Pierre can control the production of the wine at every stage. After primary fermentation comes the meticulous blending process, which gives champagne its unique flavour. Once the three varieties have been combined, it's on to secondary fermentation. This is where champagne gets its sparkle, as the yeast turns the sugar into alcohol and in doing so creates carbon dioxide bubbles. The champagne is then bottled and sent out around the world to be enjoyed. From vineyard to final vintage, now all that's left to do is uncork a bottle and pour a glass.